Today we've got a nice problem from the 2012 Philippine Math Olympiad. And make sure you stay until the end of the video because I think I know the inspiration for this problem, but I think probably saying the inspiration would give it away. Okay, so let's see what we have. So let's suppose we've got a binary operation, we'll call it star on the set of non-negative integers satisfying three conditions. We have m plus one star zero is equal to zero star m plus one. We have zero star n plus one is equal to n star zero plus one. And finally, we have m plus one star n plus one is m star n plus one. And then, well, the goal not in the exam, but the goal that we'll take will be what is this star operation? Now, I'd like to notice that we've got some clues here that this star operation should be commutative. And that's because here the variable is on the left, m plus one star zero, whereas here it's on the right, zero star m plus one. And likewise, this second rule that the star has to follow also does like the switcheroo of where the variable ends up. So, you know, like I said, this is just a hint that it should be commutative, but we've got to make sure that that is actually true. Okay, so let's maybe start with a bit of exploration. And what we'll do is just pick maybe a couple of pairs of fairly small numbers and star them and apply these rules until we get down to either knowing their value or as simple as we can get. So let's maybe start with three star two and simplify that as much as we can. Notice since neither three nor two is zero, we can apply this third rule. We can think of this as two plus one star one plus one but then that'll give us two star one plus one. Again, by this rule right here. And then likewise, we can view this as one plus one star uh, zero plus one plus one. And so that'll end up giving us one star zero plus one plus one. Oh, but I bet we know what plus one plus one is or one plus one, that's simply two. Now we're at the stage where we can apply, let's see, it's this rule right here. We'll just view this number one as uh, zero plus one, like this right here. So let's see, that'll end up giving us zero star zero plus one plus two, or in other words, is equal to three plus zero star zero. But we can't descend this zero star zero down anymore. So perhaps that's something that we can't figure out. Maybe like we could take zero star zero to be any value we wanted to. Okay, so let's maybe collect this at the top. So we have three star two is equal to three plus zero star zero. Actually, maybe I'll give some notation for this. This'll be three plus a, where a is equal to zero star zero. Then let's put a box around this and then do another example. So let's make our next example a little bit bigger. Let's say we do six star three. Okay, so we'd like to descend this a bit at a time. So we'll first view this as five plus one star uh, two plus one. So that'll give us five star two plus one. Now I think we can apply this rule again without going through the process of writing this as four plus one, one plus one. So this should give us four star one plus two, but then again, applying this rule one more time will give us three star zero plus three. Okay, nice. But now we can descend this number three by one using this with the rule that we have to add one. And we can actually do that three times until we get zero star zero plus three plus three. But notice that that's just six plus a. Okay, so now let's maybe collect that. We know that six star three is equal to six plus a. 
So maybe some sort of pattern is starting to arise. We have three star two is three plus A. Six star three is six plus A. Well, it seems like this star operation is pulling out the maximum value. Here it pulled out the maximum value of six. Here it pulled out the maximum value of three. So I think a nice guess would be that M star N is equal to the maximum of M and N plus A, where of course A is equal to zero star zero. Okay, so now let's prove this by induction. So on the last board, we came up with a guess, and that guess is for all non-negative integers M and N, M star N is equal to the maximum of M and N plus A, where A was zero star zero. But this maximum operation is, can actually be thought of as a product. In fact, there's a topic in algebra that was very popular a few years ago known as tropical geometry, which looked at a lot of results in commutative algebra and algebraic geometry through the lens of replacing a product with this maximum operator. Okay, so anyway, that's what I think the inspiration for this problem is is to look at this maximum operator kind of being inspired by tropical geometry, which was really popular around this year. Okay, so anyway, let's see how we can prove this. We'll do this with two inductions, one on the first entry and one on the second entry. Although I think we'll probably just do the first entry and leave the second one as a homework exercise. So in other words, we're gonna do the M induction. Okay, so we really already did a base case via our explorations, or at least we did close enough to a base case. So let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have k star n is equal to the maximum of k and n plus our number a. Okay, nice. And now let's consider the next case. So let's consider k plus one star n. Okay, great. And now I guess you really need to pull this apart into two cases, depending on if n is zero or n is bigger than zero. Well, maybe the n equals zero case, I'll also leave that as a homework exercise. So we'll just look at the case when n is bigger than or equal to zero. But in that case, we can write this as k plus one star n minus one plus one, and then apply this rule right here. So applying this rule right here will leave us with k star n minus one plus one. Okay, great. And then we can apply the induction hypothesis to this because this is supposed to hold, well, it's supposed to hold for all entries in right here. Okay, so that should give us, let's see, the maximum of k with n plus one, plus one, and then plus a, which just kind of comes along for free. Okay, so now let's notice what we want this to be equal to. So I'll maybe put this over here and just, Note that we want this to be true. We want this to be equal to the maximum of k plus one with n plus a. So somehow we need to combine this plus one on the outside to being that sort of object over there. And we can do that, <laughs> and we can do that with the following claim, which is fairly easy to show. And that is, the maximum of k plus one with n is in fact equal to the maximum of k with n minus one plus one. And let's maybe put a line right here because this is like just an accessory result. Okay, so this proof of our little subclaim here will be broken into two cases depending on the size of k and n. So let's see, if k plus one is less than or equal to n, notice that that is equivalent to saying that k is less than n minus one, or less than or equal to n minus one. Okay, but then notice that means that the maximum of k plus one with n is simply equal to n. 
because n is bigger than or equal to k plus 1. But now we can express n as n minus 1 plus 1. But then the number n minus 1 can be expressed as the maximum of k and n minus 1. Again, because of this inequality right here. So this gives us the maximum of k and n minus 1 plus 1. But that's all we needed to do, well, to prove this case. And now let's move on to the second case, which will be super similar. So for the second case, we'll assume that k plus 1 is bigger than or equal to n. But let's just observe that that is equivalent to saying k is bigger than or equal to n minus 1. Now we go through the same sort of calculation. So the maximum of k plus 1 with n, it'll be k plus 1 in this case because k plus 1 is bigger than or equal to n. But notice that k can be expressed as the maximum of k with n minus 1. And that's because k is bigger than or equal to n minus 1. But then again, that clears everything up. So that proves this claim, but notice this claim was all that was required to cover this thing right here, this, equ this equality that we wanted to be true. But that equality that we wanted to be true finishes the inductive proof for the first entry. And like I said, I'm going to leave the and like I said, the inductive proof for the second entry is very, very similar. We'll leave that as a homework exercise. So have we done it? Yes, we have. We have found what star is. Well, this star operation is simply like a tweak of the maximum operator. So thanks for watching the video. If you got this far and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. It would really help the channel out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.